Hey guys, welcome once again to the Troy Grambling Podcast. I am so glad you're here today. Uh, this is going to be an exciting episode. Don't forget, it's on all the streaming platforms as well as a video format on YouTube. But we are at the Dorino's Restaurant, and uh, this is a special place. Not this literal one, but uh, the Padrino Restaurant. What do you call it? Brand or... A collection of incredible restaurants but i'm here with laura and uh, mario and uh, we're gonna find out what makes this place run well cool guys you know good. <laughs> so, from bendrito's cuban restaurant so the third generation the second generation but then learned my grandpa right started it gave it over him and then now my brothers and i are at the home cuban restaurant all over south florida Oh, wow. So, so Mario, tell us a little bit about your family, the, the, the new leadership, but let's go back to the beginning. Your mom and dad started it. Correct. Yeah. My mom and dad started it in 1976. Mom came from Cuba in 1968. My dad came in 1972. Uh, and I tell people after typical things that uh, immigrants do, working at factories and all this stuff, they opened up a grocery store in New Jersey because that's what that used to do in Cuba. Then we moved out to South Florida because uh, the American dream for Cubans is to have the American dream in South Florida, in hot weather, not cold weather in New Jersey, right? So we moved out here with the idea of opening up a, a grocery store. When we came down here, the, there were already the big grocery store chains that exist currently or before a fail. These shelves. We thought that's not a good idea. He didn't think it was a good idea. Our little place was a tight and thick up here in these big places. So the opportunity for a Cuban restaurant came about. We, we we didn't. There was just a business opportunity, and that's how we started in Hialeah in 1976. 1976. We are in 2023, <laughs> and uh, so they started it, and you uh, took on, and now it's is the third generation. So so now, tell us about your family. Tell us about your wife and how many children you have. Okay, so uh, actually, interesting. I met my wife Cookie at. The Drinos at the restaurant in 1976. I actually, so I met her for the first time. Was she a client or, or a, yeah? So she worked there. No, she came with her parents. I mean, we were I was like 15, 16 years old when she came in, and I met her there for the first time. But then we met and we went to the same high school. We we're high school sweethearts. We've been married 40 years. So uh, uh, now three children. This is Laura and uh, Mario and Eddie. And uh, they are the ones who are running the business for, for uh, most. This is the only job I've ever had, by the way, restaurant. So I started with my parents and uh, had it for a while that I was the one leading it. And now, let me see, they have the, the family, the children have been with us for at least 12 years, Mario. Then, no, they got that. I think it's all on Spock. So we got 15 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then, yeah. time goes by way too fast. Eh? Yeah. Time goes by fast. And then, um, well, uh, basically, what we thought is they're pretty much a church. I am, I am, I, I, the title, because we're not titles people, but I guess my title is the chairman only because I'm not, I'm just, uh, I'm not working. They, they hate stuff. So, <laughs> I'm like, so pretty much in charge. I mean, they were all like, we did. Yep. So basically, so he's pretty just, much yeah. retired is what he means. Yeah. No, I, but, <laughs> Yes. Yes, and I know. No, no, of course not. Retired. No. Said that. I'm not retired. No. Well, at the same time, I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm working, but I'm not. Sid Charles. Yeah. <laughs> He's still very much around in the decision making yeah. and heart to heart. So yeah, all these yeah. kind of things. So no, he's not out of it completely. But yeah, my brothers and I are. Yeah, I'm the how the heart to heart, and they're the opposite. The, the, the people who love the list. The heart or the med or yeah. the body. I don't know. Yeah. So, so what tell us about your family. So I am married for 10 years, actually, and Mark waits eight years to kiss uh, a daughter as option, a stingman on four and a half year old. And, uh, they just started school today. Yeah. That's a big day. Now, so all three of you are involved in the, in the business? Zach's on the oldest, and then my two younger brothers, Mario and I, um, and we all have different roles. Yep. So what roles do y'all? So funny enough, the way that we were just naturally wired and the way that a business is broken up happened to going by it. So Mario is an administrative guy. So in the office, everything fine at all those death things. Um, and he's the president's suit. So he's kind of like the boss. And then I am. So the marketing, which you let me know, that's why I bring from that creative base. And then Eddie, the younger one, he's operation. Um, so that's, and businesses are broken up that way. And just, we're just super wired that way. That's just how we were. What we're good at, our propensities are in those areas. 
Now, how did you guys come to that? Did you decide it or it just happen or how did you? Well, I have to take some credit. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, actually, those rules, uh, I, they kind of happened, but they didn't happen. I mean, that's the direction that I, that I thought that they could fit in. And, but again, you're not sure if that's actually what's going to, if they're going to fulfill that role. Uh, what happens is as time went by, it was confirmed that that's exactly what they're also. Every time we open a restaurant, actually, it was interesting because uh, that's still the way I thought they were wired. But every time we open up a new restaurant, it was very much confirmed that that's the way that they're wired. So it's very, uh, I have a lot of peace about these roles. And and, uh, and that's what it makes it very nice because no one wants to do the other person's role. They're wired that way. And those roles, I thought that they were going to fit that, those roles, and they fit this. So it, it's worked out very well. Everybody wants to do the other for Kim job, that's for sure. Yeah, that's good. That, uh, funny how God works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. things out, Ali, uh, allowing to do so. So I know uh, there's got to be, a, you know, great joy, of course, working with your family and still having your, uh, your dad working, but not working. Uh, but what are some of the, uh, challenges you faced because I mean, was it a smooth process where, you know, as you were moving into a new direction, you guys tap came in, or were there lots of conversations? You know, because I think a lot of people, especially, uh, you know, family-owned businesses, kind of go through that process. Even in ministries, you know, our our kids are all in ministry as well. So, tell us a little bit about how the process. So the whole process was was very organic. We all just um, came on at different times. So. The, the Mario came out first, so he actually it was almost like uh, finders keepers. But he assumed that role because he had been there first and he had been there longest, learned everything, and then I came on second. And there was a need, right? So actually, I came on with the idea of I would like to grow Peter. I have lots of things to be my own, and so I kind of accidentally fell into that sales part. And then with that, the marketing came on, and so all that developed. And then Eddie, when he came on, he had worked before in a custodial company. So he, he was, again, the wiring just fit all these different things and then needs as they arose. But as for conversations and how that happened, it would, I guess people would like it to have maybe been more or that you'd think that there would be more, but it wasn't. It was just smooth. All of it just kind of fell into place. Um, it's possibly that it's hard, hard to believe, but no, it's truly how it happened. It was, it was organic. It's, we're very fortunate in that way. You, 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 get along we didn't have to have any of those uh, conversations that you would imagine so um if that's well, that's how that's and, I, mean, and, I, I think in, in some ways you've set that long you know with the right kids right i mean the way the family operates right it was with conflict there yeah. and i understand it's one another well it's been the most difficult part about empowering the, the next generation of many Wow. Uh, I think very hit spotted because uh, it hasn't been difficult but it was kind of well the biggest decision to, to, to be made is let me, let me back up a little my children are very respectful so uh what we would need uh in movies if i would give some opinion for the most part they just yield to my kid. and i remember this happened several years ago but i really thought i'm kind of into a thought of being here because they respect me so much that whatever i say they kind of just automatically direct it and that's on i step it boy bro but that uh, and I, I said, you know, you guys are, you guys make decisions. Okay. Obviously I'll give my pay. Uh, and, and I, I don't think there was, you know, it wasn't so difficult because it just, again, it happened kind of organic. And I, I truly believe I was, but the verse for my life is trust him with all the your heart and need not on your all understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. And I obviously think that's what's happening in, 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 in our lives, the rest are. And, and again, they've confirmed that they are more of that equipped and that they need to do this. And I have great carpet say it. So it really wasn't, it wasn't that hard. The hardest part was it wasn't even hard, but that decisions, is it wise for me to step back or do I still stay in the place? Well, that is kind of it. But so, so, but it makes us, I, so what happens, like you said, is we were, you were late, we were late. He was laying the foundation before. That means is that with that respect, now he stepped away, but we still go to him for questions. So it's never like they're in this absence or this void. It's with this sermon because we're still, you know, seeking it in some ways. But it's our decisions 
um, you know, with his input as opposed to us just following finally his. Um, but yeah, it's, again, to reiterate your point, it was like, whatever he did and instilled in us is what created that. And it's been uh, successful. Well, it's up so I like to think that. And, and I not only that, I think the best of Adrenos is yet. I mean, one of the neat things, uh, and I'm very proud of us as a family, is that uh, when I, I'm in the restaurant business, not because I love necessarily the restaurant business, in the sense that I, I have a dream that I want to you know, have a restaurant. I'm in the restaurant business because my parents opened the old restaurant, and I saw their hard work, and I did not want that to go to waste. Mm -hmm. I had all their outcomes, the times that they had to literally sleep in the restaurant because if they wouldn't have to come early in the mornings that they did that, there was no way on earth I was going to just let that die and then I go up and do my own thing. So I'm in the business for that reason. I think the, the children in general, uh, initially when they came on board, came for that same reason to honor kind of the work that was done before. But the neat thing is that each generation that I just take what they were given and just silo, everyone has contributed to it. And that's been the neat thing. So that's why I'm very confident in the the best of Pedrillos is yet to come. I'm extremely confident. I'll bet money on it. That's right. what's going to happen because of that. Exactly. So let's uh, change gears a little bit and talk about just the restaurant business uh, in general. Have, uh, uh, well, let me ask you a few questions. First question is this, Scott. What are some of the things that you've learned in business that has actually helped you in your family that you've taken? Or, or other people the other way, either something maybe you learned in family that has really helped you to be successful in the business world. Um, well, what I was we were just talking about was that respect thing. Yeah, respecting each other in, in your family and working together well and just communicating all those things. Of course, that matters when you're all working together. I mean, we could really build this in us. Like we get into an argument and we just go for solve it. If we work that way, I mean, work like would be in Israel. So just having that and then that's also how we deal with our everybody right with our, our team with vendors our guests um just you know giving that respect to everybody so that would be something i guess that translates really well um i mean in, in general like we said the restaurant is a vehicle for us so um it's this thing that we use to just impact lives um so when you know, we learned in our family, I guess uh, the faith element of it and that we use that in our restaurant to use it, like I said, as, or in business, as a vehicle to, to help others. And that's something that I translated over in, um, you know, I'm like, yeah, it sounds, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like, boy, I'm, I say, as, as being leading, you only have to want why. There's not like my business, why I think my family, it's, it's my social life. It's only one there. And, and, and again, and what you learn how to do life at home well is the same thing that it would do it at work, if I do it at any, which is basically what was down to truly trying to honor the Lord and being sick to be. That's the most people. So those are, I think those are the basics. And uh, if, if you do that and actually pursue excellence, which I think we do that with honor in, um, they just burn out real well. But they're doing it. It's uh, it's uh, cool, of course, uh, for me. I feel good to, to see it uh, happen. How have you guys dealt with? You know, you're very relational. You know, the heart to heart, and then it's, you, you get larger. You know, be relational with so many people. So, how have you guys, as you guys have even uh, added restaurants to the portfolio? How have you dealt with? Because I'm sure the employees feel some difference as as the business is growing. So, have you guys been intentional? About, how do you? How do you deal with that? So, yeah, it certainly has changed. So, they, you know, it on that one. It's different, like, multiplication. Like, he was very much involved. Uh, a few things that we do, I mean, means we try to be intentional in having um, orderly things that where every, all the team is getting together. So, while well, obviously you bounce around to the locations and you know everybody for the, the most part, there's sort of a rush. Well, okay, so I can't say I know everybody's name, but I know most people. Um, at least the management works, but we have, um, so one thing that we do every year is we do team building the live gauntlet with just for, you know, this year, I mean, so it's like a team building gift back thing. Everybody gets together. So there's like feeling of, you know, multiple locations with a uh, one heart, one culture. Um, we, you know, all the rest of them get together, like Christmas parties, things like that. We do, um, leadership on like, is that every, well, not everybody, but like, you know, under the or manager, things like that. And we do monthly meetings with all the managers, you know, they get, get together. So there, there is still 
touch points if there's this sense of unity amongst everybody. Um, and it's going to be harder as you grow, obviously, to have that close in, but in, we are intentional about it. It's part of, um, you know, our culture in team with Hawaii, then you should respect other people's money and don't mean that. You know, but, but that is a challenge, by the way, especially the way that we built the business. The build, I said to you that the, our business is built by relationship. As you grow, you can't have the same relationship. So I think part of our processing growing is we, we have to figure that one out uh, because we are forget. Uh, we have people working with us that were here before they were born. Actually, so I mean, imagine oh, like so, somebody that knew me or didn't even know her was hanging around, saw me as a baby, and now I'm like, you know, had other box. Like, okay. everybody's been very good about that, by the way. There's been, there's a lot of that, and um, in we've, we've managed to make that work. Yeah. As, of course, I'm the oldest, so right. then you have my like little baby right. ever comes up, you know, Eddie comes along, and now he's the so, but everybody's been very cool with that. Um, because, because again, maybe they, they respected my grandparents and him so much that they. They just it, it, it tripled down to us, and I'm using the word respect a lot because you could tell that's one of our four things and we that we talked about here. But um, but yeah, but it is so that is a challenge for the world. That is a challenge because it's it's uh yeah it, it, we're not as it's keep rolling. We're not going to be able to have the time to spend with everyone the same way that I was. I used to be in the restaurant, so you form those relationships. Now I have to go intentionally, right? Well, even for the, the guests, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, right. if you go to the restaurant, you see the ownership. Mm -hmm. you know, that's a lot different than you know, seeing you manage. Right. I mean, not that that's bad, but if you're used to seeing the owner. Yeah, I, I, yeah no, no doubt. If what had happened at the beginning, because I was that I was involved, especially in the plantation mm -hmm. restaurant, uh, people, I would get to know, oh, here's the pilot. When you're not there, they think things change. So, so, so it's a model that worked, but it's not a model to, uh, you can't, this, the, the same relationship style that we had before, it's not a model for teens. We have to be able to do that, but not us, but manage one. So one of the restaurant has to be able to, to do that, but it doesn't, it can't be it. And that, yeah, let me ask you this part. Do you, do you think you could have done that if you weren't turning it over to your children? And would your love for your kids to see the business grow? Mm -hmm. Do you think if it was just a manager or something that your desire to connect and then override your desire for the business to grow? Do you? Yeah. Well, here's, uh, for, for me, the business growing was always a necessity for, for a necessity. And in other way, and, and to me, when the water basis to grow, and I say this to, to the, the children. I don't, we don't have goals that we're going to have so many restaurants by such and such. We don't have such currents. The only motivation for my group, for our, for our thank you. Uh, I feel that we're blessed to be in our, there's opportunities that we have been giving that are, that most people on the planet yeah. and, I, and I think of the parable of the talents. The parable of the talents is what motivates that we constantly need to grow. The one, you know, what power? Well, one talent, the two talents, or the five? You familiar? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, I don't know how it is. I do want to know about it. So, but so here's the deal. I mean, the one who doubled that, well, that a bit of faithful servant. The one who just kind of kept like the same, you lazy sir. And that is our only motivation for growth, to be good stewards with this blessed thing that we have received that not most people on the planet so it's not because we want to have 20 restaurants, it's because we want to be good stewards of that. So that always, the growth was always, the growth was always in there. There was, there was no way that I ever assumed we're going to have one restaurant, we're going to know everybody going to have this nice cozy whatever. There was balance never in life. It was always we had to max. That's good. That's a, that's a, good, that's a good perspective to think about. Mm -hmm. A stewardship for you know, like some of the restaurants, who else they might be in a good, uh, a good steward that I have. Well, how about speak to some of those? I'm sure there's some folks listening both in ministry and business who grow really patient. In other words, they their desire for more uh, the power met or more leadership. So you kind of you know you growing up in this. Did you go through any kind of season where you got a uh, a little uh, impatient, or or did you have to deal with that at all? As far as being able to take on more and have more of a fingerprint. No, um, I, I didn't because my path was, I went, I went to school for hospitality. When I got out, I was in a hotel for three years and I was working a lot there. 
And I said, I thought I better work this hard. I want to do it for myself. So when I came back, I presented my plan, which was to grow catering, like I mentioned, and, and I worked hard at it and did well. So all of that responsibility, I never was eager for something that wasn't time for the timing was always right for the next step. Um, so no, I, I mean, I gotta say like felt it. I can't recall right now. Um, it was always like kind of the, the next gradual step. Um, and I just, yeah, I kept doing the war kicking on, I guess, more different responsibilities. And then they were, they were given. So no, I, I didn't feel like that, I put, saying like that struggle of like, you know, give me this now, or where's my, you get it works. This is mine. Give it to me. No, it was, it was really not like that. Uh, I don't feel any of us did. We kind of, I think the girls are all just honoring, um, the work that was like before us and, um, when you just trying to do the best with it. And like you said, your faith and your confidence that it and dwells in your, in yourself and that's, I mean, cause I think mo you know, most people uh, often struggle with a sense that it's not happening fast. Um, I don't have that. Let me tell you, I actually funny that you see that because I had that, but not at the restaurant. I had that in my, I, I need to impact more. I need to do more life. And then that's when I got, got involved with ministry and I'm just I'm doing a little bit more outside of the restaurant. Um, with still the restaurant, as like I would say, you know, maybe backing me at so still so in nine to five and I have a good balance with my family and everything like this. But I did have that. Um, I want more. And I felt like this hunger needs to be satiated. And so I've been involved in a few more things and in, in industries and just like trying different avenues. Um, so it's funny. I never had that what you're describing with work, but I did have that. And I would like to do more. And I am using the restaurant, as we were talking about, using the restaurant as a vehicle. So I am, you know, this idea of just impacting the community, impacting our you know, team members, our guests, and everything like that. I'm trying to to do as much as I can um, to just get back. Yeah, how do you to kind of further go a little further on that with your family? I know a lot of times, uh, at least in ministry, a lot of times, a lot of the ladies sometimes will have such skill and guilt that mm -hmm. they're not yeah. at home. And, yeah. You know, yeah, it was in, and sometimes the ones who are home with the kids and feel guilty about I, pursuing. Have you had to work through any of that or do you? Yes, I did. Yeah, I did. Um, and that was when I had to figure out that balance. Of course, like that's why I, I, I mean, there's an array with my husband that all these things I'm taking on are in a nine to five kind of time. It's actually funny you see that specifically today because after dropping the girls, I had my mom group going, I used to get her out for coffee. And I was like, I gotta have something. So there are moments like that, but my actually spending time with my girls and my family, that's, I believe this intact. Yes, of course, it would, I would love to do more of all the things, but right now it does feel balanced. I did go through that, but it, and just, it's a matter of priority, how you get the run schedule on your and management and all these seven people. Um, everybody's aware that we're, you know, on the same page, the same goal and, and my husband's with no support. So, so, uh, again, there's so many places, there many places we can go at one at a time, but I tell, so, you know, it's, uh, as we hear out from Laura and hear about the, the boys, um, uh, Mario, they, what, what's the key Mario to you and cookie being a role? Cause you know, we live in a time where there's so many challenges within our families just to get them to go to school, let alone to get them to excel in, in many areas of their life. What do you take that you will cookie? I'll give well, I, I, and we'll eat. Well, uh, I didn't want to explore what picture you did wrong. <laughs> well, I'm curious. I'm curious to hear from them. This is a great question. I'm literally, I'm curious to hear from that, what they thought we did right. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. I'm going to say something that might sound very, uh, I don't even know how it goes, but here's how I can tell you exactly the strategy. We were never hurt to keep, but my wife and I, from an early age, wanted to honor the Lord with all our hearts. And I tell people, if you put that as the priority, right, and you only have one life, your Christian life, not your business life, your personal life, and whatever other lives you have, you only have one life. And that life is for the purpose of honoring him and abiding by what he directs, by his guidance. You're going to do pretty good. You're going to do pretty well. And I need that with all my heart. I don't say this to say I am a perfect Christian. Look at my life. I'm not saying that. I will just say to people, trust them with all your heart. Trust them with all your heart. You know? Never, never cross a boundary that he said not to cross in order to achieve something. Everybody do that. You're going to go back. 
Uh, Troy, nothing that happens does it happen to us with significance. Have I ever banged on a door? Not a single thing. And I told my kids this. You don't have to knock on doors for opportunities to come. You just have to do what we do it in a God honoring way. And He will open doors for it. And that's that's the strategy. And I think with my kids, I didn't have, I said, I didn't micromanage the, to become a certain way. I did. I did. We lived out a life, hopefully, that we presented that we trust that they trusted the Lord, and I think that's how they ended up turning out the way they are. But I know that's a good thing. Yeah, uh, uh, but, uh, but I still want to hear like I still don't. I, I always maybe when I dad they'll say what what we did what I did right. I have no idea. I think if I have to say I I what I always say is like I think they give a good example, and with enough bad examples, you you kind of go back to that. So I was he been a lot better his whole life, and I. Then, um, but but we all hunter, we haul, and that's the point. Like you have to have a what is that true north, right? So I I always said my faith, but you have this example that you you want to emulate. So I guess just yeah, so that you're a good example to your kids of what they want to follow. Maybe that's what they did. Right. I don't know the specific. I can't tell you specifics, but I know that the three of us are. More neat, normal than a lot of other people. So they did really well, whatever normal is. Um, I mean, well, look, we all, we, we all get along really well. We're all work in the family business. We all have um, families and kids that all of us actually get along. You and I get along with my sister a lot. So, I mean, yeah, I know we're very right. I can't tell you the formula. I think he, he just outlined the formula. It's amazing. Sometimes we, we do, we make it more complex. I, I think that's exactly what I was going to say. It, it, the, I, everything that I'm saying, we're making everything sound so easy, but it's not about easy. It's not overcomplicated. It's you, we, if you have a guidebook and you have a manual, follow it. It gets complicated when you don't go by it. I mean, that's like, yeah, sorry, we're, we're oversimplifying something that came out, you know, well, but it's just, you know, I guess, you know, all. I forgot that. Yeah. <laughs> make but as scripture it. says, it. yeah. And, and you know, I, I, I think the vulnerability and the the, uh, the realness is is important. I, you know, sometimes we try to hide from our family who we really are, and you never really can. And then once you lose that trust, like you said, you then you lose a, a true north a, 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 because you don't know what who were my mom and dad really. You know, yeah, you know what I'm saying when when there's that honesty, they don't have to be perfect. I don't you know, but you yeah. actually know. What they're pursuing, it won't have the ups and with them. So, uh, well, we're just about out of time, but I, I wanted to, to take a few moments and talk about you got to deal with a lot of, uh, you know, you became pretty phobic, right? And uh, I'm sure that was uh, a challenge. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about that journey and kind of where you're at today. So, so though it was a crazy guy, um, it was obviously unprecedented. There's even an interview of me on we on like channel six and I was like, we're not letting anybody go. We promise. Like what, what did I know? March, you know, 17, you know, right after they closed everything down. I was like, no, we'll be fine. So no, we didn't. You know, there was we let go of a lot of you. And we have to close restaurants. Actually, the one that we're sitting in right now was fully closed. Not just the you know, uh dining rooms. Everybody had to close dining rooms, but fully yeah. So two locations out of six at the time and I now had to fully close. Um, and we, we made it through and that was because we did have enormous blessing. We had actually a government agency, the, um, the Department of Elder Affairs, Broward, um, County, they reached out to us to do meals for the elderly. So that, uh, contract, that partnership led to tons of tons of meals. Actually, we're now in the millions of meals that we've delivered since 12 Um, and because of that, that really did pull us through, um, we were able to, you know, work with them, figure out from start to finish. We'd never done this before. We never, you know, it had, does deliveries of frozen meals or all the nutritional things down like that you have to go by or um, on a government agency. But we figured out and made it work. There was definitely adapting there. That was that was our lesson that we learned throughout that time was adapt or die. You can't just be sitting there on your hand and going, oh, well, you know, what was me? They're closing down. Um, and, you know, you just sit there. No, we made it work all that i and we're like i said we're so fortunate we have that better did you now and better contract that we're still doing that the rolls runs survived and i believe thrived throughout that time and the other great thing is that we were in florida and we were closed for that long because right. i do believe and i say it all the time that we were in any other state i don't know if we would have made it because i don't know who and um 
you know, to, to be rent and equals for so much higher. But we were able to make it. And um, I was like, no, I just survived that time thrive. And we came out the other side, I get stronger with a, with a core team also. Because I think like a lot of people in the high right. life with a strong life. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like what you were saying. I mean, if they approached you, you like you said, you don't have to go knock through all the doors, right? Do not go out there. It was exactly that. It was exactly that. Yeah, we did not pursue all these five less men there involved. There's lots of restaurants in row. <laughs> so trust in the Lord with all your heart and leave, not in your understanding. We always acknowledge it and he will do it. Uh, I could speak about that all day. It's, it's almost like the yeah, okay. <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much. It is a, an honor uh, to get to talk to you. And uh, we're going to bring our team to ask Cuban food a little bit later. So we're excited about that as well. And I want to let everybody out there know. You know, this is a special moment because uh, uh, I'm one of those. I don't remember Laura as a baby. I don't remember as a teenager. Mm -hmm. So when she reminded me how old she was, how many kids she had. We are. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I just didn't make me feel uh, uh, much older than I am. It's a, a, a huge blessing to see, uh, like I said, in your life and in your brother's lives and how God's used Mario Cookie. And of course, Stephen and myself, you know, one of the things. Uh, that I told you were, or we prayed when we came was that God would be with friends because we were leaving Arkansas kind of the South Florida. And I don't know how many folks out there would say I've traveled, but there's a huge difference between Arkansas and South Florida. And we didn't know anybody and Seth had to go back to work. We had to, it was really hard, uh, difficult to us. And uh, Mario and Cookie are two of the people that got uh, brought into our lives. The restaurant and plantation, which is, is uh, closed, but we used to, I used to, what day, uh, Wednesday, maybe it was, I can't remember, one day a week, uh, at least, I would go down there for lunch that would last several hours. And uh, I don't know how much that costs the business. I'm sorry, Laura. Yeah. Uh, for why I to spend that much time uh, with uh, myself and uh, and uh, mainly Raul, but a few other folks as well, the uh, uh, pastors at, um, uh, at Glades. But anyway, it's, I just always want to say thank you for uh, you and Cookie. You watched Tyler uh, and the kids one time, but we got to go to California. Uh, uh, and right. uh, we could not have done that. So I, I just want to say that I do, uh, always meet a lot and we celebrate uh, the future success and the success of your family. So uh, thank you. Well, thank you for having us here. And, and I told Troy, you have been a significant person in my life. So thank you. All right, guys, don't forget, you can uh, find it on uh, YouTube, uh, the video version, also on all the platforms uh, when it comes to podcasts and streaming. We love you guys, and uh, we'll see you next Thursday right here on the Troy Grambling Podcast. God bless.